John Twist of University Motors, and today I want to talk to you about fitting H-type carburetors, any type of carburetor really, but in this case, H-type carburetors back onto a T-type. These carburetors are completely rebuilt, so Max can come over here and take, take a look. They're pretty nice looking. Oh my gosh, I just saw some suction chambers on my Facebook page that were literal mirrors. Now you can see my finger in this, but I mean, dude, you, you could read the, read the fine print on the warning labels, if you can read backwards, um, in this other guys that he had on my Facebook page. Oh my gosh, he spent a lot of time making those into mirrors. Anyway, these are all done. New shafts, new needles and seats, uh, new needles, new jets. Everything's cleaned up, all set to go. Now the tools are not that complicated. Here are the tools. Now, I don't have the tools to mount them onto the manifold. That would be a 3 8 British um, wrench, um, unless you got metric nuts on there, and I don't know what size that is. The thread's metric, but the original nuts are, have uh, BSF um, sizing on them. So it's really pretty easy. Here's the SU wrench. Everybody's seen one of these. If, you've got, if you're cool, you have one on, on your, on your keychain. And then we've got our, our 1 8 inch um, um, BSF wrench, 3 16 excuse me, BSF wrench. This, which you can make out of a paper clip, what is that for? I'll show you. A screwdriver, a 4BA socket but since you don't have a 4BA socket, 1 8 works just perfectly. And then either the, this is pretty used, either the um, SU synchronizing tool or, it's just as handy, a piece of half inch heater hose. Well, this is air conditioning hose for my daughter's car, but it's only for the demonstration. So after we get the carburetors bolt, bolted up to the manifold, then we, since we have two separate carburetors, we want, to, we want to disconnect one of these four bolts on the interconnecting linkage so that the carburetors can work independently of each other. That one works and, well, they're easy for me. This one works, okay? So we've got two independent carburetors. Also, and, and very critically, we have to remove one of these pins so this interconnecting link drops away. So we'll take brass split pin. You always use brass and you can bend it with your fingers. So we drop that away. Now we're all set to tune. So I, when I send these out, when, on the rare occasion that I actually do these, these are for Wayne. Wayne, this video is for you. Um, I leave the, the adjuster nuts three full turns, 18 flats down. A lot of argument about where to start. That's where I start. And you can usually start the car without the choke. If you have to, just choke one carburetor. You're working underneath the bonnet. So the, the starter switch is right next to you. You can push the switch and, and choke the carburetor. Dr whoops. Drop the jet. You can see the, the jet drops here. That's the, it's not a choke at all. It's a mixture control, but that's him. So you start him up, and as soon as he starts to get warm, because you can't tune unless the car is warm, and you can't tune until all three of the prior uh, considerations are taken care of. That's emissions. Well, there's no emissions on my TD. Yes, there are, absolutely can't be plugged up. The engine has to be okay, constant, you know, consistent compression, and the spark plugs have to be gapped right, and the valve lash and all that kind of stuff, clean oil. Um, and then the ignition it has to be timed right. When you're all done with that, then you can get to this. So now we're back to it. So we've started, started him up. We've let him warm up. And we, our goal is to get each carburetor to draw the same amount of air as the other. Now sometimes when it's warming up, you can hear it um, start to run thick, rich, ba bump ba bump So at that point, you might choose to go ahead and, and, and screw one of these things up a full turn or something. You might choose to, just so it's running comfortably. Then we're going to check the airflow. So we're either going to use our unison 
on here and on here and balance the airflow by adjusting the, the adjuster screws. Actually, these are MGA type carburetors going on a T type, but here's the one adjuster screw for the front carb. And here's the adjuster screw for the rear carburetor. Same, same, uh, same idea. So you can increase or decrease. And usually um, in the beginning, let me see if I can get that in the slot. Uh, usually in, in the beginning, I'll make full turns adjustments and then finally half turns, not finally, full turn adjustments, half turns, and then quarter turns. And sometimes I'll do eighth turns just to keep them straight. Straight, eighth, quarter, three-eighths, half. Anyway, you work back and forth. And this guy, you can wash the little pith um, uh, piece, the little plastic piece, you can't even see it in mine, go up and down. What I prefer myself, because I still have reasonably good hearing, is you let this guy stand proud of your finger and put him in the throat so that you're sure that um, you're testing the same thing each time. You don't just do this because here you might have it half an inch in and over here you might have it an eighth inch in and the hiss is going to change. And you listen to the sound. Well, this one is drawing more. So we would increase this by a turn, decrease that by a turn, check it again. Get them closer, 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 until finally they're both drafting the same amount. And it's idling 800,000 RPM. Then you lock the carburetors back together. And any future adjustments you make, you make an equal number of turns on each screw. If you increase this by an eighth of a turn, you increase, increase this by an eighth of a turn. So now that it's drafting with the same amount of air, our goal is to check the mixture. We're doing a cut in here because I realized I forgot to tell you how exactly to adjust the mixture. So this is the jet and by, by changing the, the position of the jet, we can make it richer or leaner. You know it's rich when it's pulled down because that's choke. That makes it super rich, just super rich. So, I mean, what are we pulling that down? The better part of half an inch. This guy has got 26 threads per inch. It's a British standard brass thread. This nut in a full turn then does about um, 40 thousandths. So each flat is six, six thousandths of, of an inch or so. And that really makes a great difference be, um, between uh, here and here it'll run better or worse. Um, I mean, just, just half a turn, it's really sensitive. So when you screw this down, it makes it rich. You're in the same direction as the choke. And again, it's not a choke, it's a mixture control. But when you screw it down, it's rich. When you screw it up, it's lean. And again, just like uh, doing any kind of adjustment, start off making uh, making adjustments half a turn at a time and then and then uh, maybe a full turn at, at a time and and between every adjustment that you make between every adjustment that you make rev it up and blow it out ram ram get rid of the carbon that's built up and stuff l l let it come on back down to idle so whether you're adjusting the, the mixture or the idle between every adjustment, rev it up and let it come back down. That's really important. So I'm glad that I remember to add this for my cut in. The goal is to check the mixture. Easiest way, little thin screwdriver, we put it right underneath the air piston and just, just barely, barely, barely move the piston. Just barely touch it. Now, if the air manifold is on, which takes half a day to get off and back on, you can use this guy and you can go up underneath the ear. Oh, let's see, let's find him here. I gotta look, here we go, here's the breather hole. 
And we can, we can see the piston, see the piston rise and fall here, okay? So we can use this to raise the piston, but it isn't as controllable as the screwdriver. You shouldn't have the air manifold on yet anyway. So as you just distort this, just distort this, and I didn't already tell you, you should have 90 weight gear oil in the carburetors. Not ATF, not, not brake fluid, 90 weight, okay? Now, some people say, oh my gosh, that's just craziness, but try it. I mean, this accounts for the wear that's occurred in the carburetors over the past 60 or 70 years. So anyway, we lift this ever so slightly, and one of three things is gonna happen. The RPMs are gonna fall, immediately fall, or the higher we lift this, the faster it's gonna run, or if it's perfect, is just as we disturb this, the RPM will climb about 50 RPM and then fall away. You can't watch a, a, a digital tachometer looks like a gasoline pump with the numbers rolling on it. But if you've got a moving coil, a needle, on, a, on an old dwell meter, or a tack dwell, oh boy, that's really nice. You can see that 50 RPM if, if you can't hear it. So you adjust one. Now, when, when you adjust this one up and make him uh, as efficient as he should be, the RPM is gonna rise. And all of a sudden you're doing 1300 RPM. So you gotta come back here and slow the, slow the carburetors down, back down to 800. And then you come back here to the back one and you try the same with that. And you lift the piston ever so slightly. And you change that and again, it's gonna run faster, slower, depending on how you're making your adjustment, what your initial adjustment was. Finally, at the end, they're both drafting the same amount of air, the same suction. And if you just touch the piston, just touch it just touch it, you're gonna get this slight rise in RPM and then fall away. The higher the piston goes, the leaner, um, the leaner the mixture. So, it, it, not when you're running, there's a spring on there, but I'm artificially moving it up. So I'm reducing the vacuum at the Venturi, so it sucks less uh, gasoline out, out of the jet. So once that's all done, drafting the same amount of air and they're both responding as well as can be, then you can go ahead and adjust your link here and get this so the pin drops in. You don't wanna force it, because if, if this guy's too short, guess what? He's gonna pull this choke on, and if he's too long, he's, he's, gonna, he's gonna push this one on. So um, you wanna make sure that this is the last thing that you do. Then you put the air manifold on or the air cleaners on and go out and drive the car and actually see how, how it performs. You're not done until you've actually done a, a test drive. These brass split pins are great. I get a lot of this stuff now from McMaster Car. Geez, all you gotta do is order it. They've got, you, you want stainless Whitworth <laughs> cotter pins, you can, you can get them. I know they're split pins in our language, but they don't call them split pins, I think they call them cotter pins. Anyway, they're so handy because then you can, you can um, just adjust, bend them with your, with your finger. Steel ones are, are horrid. You'll poke a hole in the end of your thumb trying to move them. That's as easy as it is. It really is easy. If you come to my rolling tech at some show, I'm gonna be in Atlantic City this coming week. Today is the 10th, is today the 10th of June, 11th of June already. Um, I'm gonna be in Atlantic City next week, half a day tuning cars in the parking lot. I'm gonna be in uh, Altoona, Pennsylvania, uh, the weekend before Labor Day. Labor Day, I'm gonna be in Portland, Oregon, tuning MGs at the All-British Sports Car Show. I, can't, I don't know a whole lot about the other cars. A little bit later today, we're gonna tune a Mini, but um, that's just like a, regular B-series engine, only a whole lot smaller, a whole lot harder to get to, and sideways. <laughs> but other than that, it's the same. Um, anyway, so tuning this stuff is pretty straightforward. Some people say it's an art form. I got a lot of experience doing it. I can listen to it. If you got an exhaust leak, it's really hard to tune, really hard to tune. 
So that's my comments for today about redoing this. Sorry the video is so long, um, but this really is, is for Wayne, so Wayne can watch it when he puts these back on his TD and make his, uh, make his TD run great. So go to my website, universitymotorsltd.com, and go in the top ribbon and put your name in there uh, so I send you a constant contact uh, um, email before my Zoom sessions, or sometimes I just send them out anyway. This week, geez, I've got uh, um, Wayne, who, uh, who published the, uh, the book, um, Mouse, the man, and the MGB. He's all excited because it's been translated into three different languages now. And uh, so there's a greater market, so I'll have something to say about that. I got some great pictures of two short of oil filters uh, that uh, are, um, you can buy uh, from Pet Boys or I don't know, somebody, but they're the wrong filter. You can't get any oil pressure if you put them on your car. That doesn't work well. So anyway, there's always, always good stuff that comes out and go to my Facebook page, University Motors LTD, and I will let you in as a friend. And as, long, as long as I can tell you've got an MG, I get, I get some stuff in there that's like, why? You know, anyway, um, as long as I know you've got an MG, hey, you're, you're in like Flint. So a lot of resources here. If you're getting jammed up sometime, you can call me. My number's on my website. And I'm happy, very happy, to help you make your MG ownership a pleasure. Until then, safety fast.